people, not for profit. Science for the people, not for war. Science is really part of like the background ideology and culture of our world. It's a lot about, it's a lot of how we conceive of the world is in terms of like progress. And so it's really kind of critical to have people who understand in detail the science. Science to remove poverty, science to eradicate disease, science to wipe out ignorance, science to create jobs, science to improve working conditions, science to improve agriculture, science for the laborer, science for the villager, science for everyone, science to change the world. The issues of biological determinism or automation and the use of tech in our lives, science and technology to make weapons and wars. My hope is that we can really get people to understand not just that science is political but that science can serve a different purpose in society which is to meet the needs of everyday people. The organization was born out of activism and it always has been characterized by, by activism. Me being from the city of Atlanta, the people that we're trying to help are uh, people that I know. Lakewood is on the south side of Atlanta. Um, it's a complete food desert that we're trying to get a co-op built. Eco-action and Science for the People uh, held an environmental racism panel that included student organizations as well as a representative of ourselves and eco-action. Trying to trace and oppose uh, corporate money that's corrupting our education. Today, Science for the People aims to pick up where the original left off. In 1969, there was uh, the st students in Boston and MIT organized a moratorium on research. March 4th, I remember the date, where students at MIT uh, left the lab in protest and reflection about how research was being used. I was being swept up in the, in the social movements of the day. I was very involved in the anti-war movement. At Columbia, we were protesting, shutting the university down for its uh, participation in war research. At that time, I, I think the organization CESPO was being formed, Scientists and Engineers for Social and Political Action. And that at some point, the name was changed to uh, Science for the People. Science for the People was exciting and remains exciting um, because these were scientists who read seriously in history and political philosophy and also historians and philosophers and sociologists who took science really seriously having intellectual discussions uh, about the political consequences even though it was a radical organization far outside the mainstream they were able to push that mainstream significantly. And it was never this organization that was world famous, but at civil, certain points, right? sociobiology being a critique to sociobiology, helping critique farm worker mechanization, helping to critique biological determinism in general, disarmament. So, you know, it's, I think it's influential out of proportion with its numbers. I think that Science for the People was a really important uh, organization for, especially for students that didn't know how to merge their science and their politics. And I think Science for the People, it helped us uh, see that we could actually use our science to enhance you know, people's livelihood and, and to reconcile our, our political activism. Well, I, I was definitely a, a disruptor, but I, I don't like, disruption sounds too negative to me. We were, we were very positive. We were disrupting in, in a way that was refocusing to issues of the day which had to do with uh, the Vietnam War and militarism and the alienation of, of science, scientists and science from their work. Uh, I think I joined Science for the People in about 1978 and uh, I was in Ann Arbor and we had a very, very active chapter. One of the groups that I was in um, was in support of the Farm Labor Organizing Committee, a union of mis Midwestern farm workers. Uh, another group that grew out of Science for the People, and I think that's one of the, the real legacies of that earlier Science for the People. The, the uh, kind of organization and mobilization of people and the creation of these other organizations. In the 1980s, I was involved in a program that uh, sent people to teach science in uh, Nicaraguan universities, organized by Science for the People starting in 1986. I think we were the first to call out the, um, the 
effectively non-scientific nature of, for example, the biological determinism. Uh, the logic being try to uh, convince people that their state of being, their personal state, their political state, their class structure, etc., somehow is related to their underlying biological biological uh, characteristics, usually, usually implying that there's a genetic component to the whole thing. And so I think Science for the People was pretty important in at least initiating the criticism of that entire, that entire enterprise. The, the Science for the People movement gave people strength. Scientists and people interested in science ha have a lot to contribute to the, uh, to the social movements. So it's not only that it's okay for us to speak up, but it's valuable for us to speak up. We have a role. The original Science for the People from 1969 to 1989 published more than 100 issues of a bi-monthly magazine on all kinds of subjects that fall under the category of radical science. So I've been reflecting on what Science for the People contributed back in the 70s and 80s over the past few months, realizing uh, how many uh, articles were not written in the intervening years because there was no place to, to publish them, no place to, to make them uh, available. How many analyses, I should say, were, were, were not made public? The original publication, it was, you know, there's critical analysis and it's very deep thinking, but they're also a little irreverent. They want to have a sense of humor and sense of camaraderie. The magazine offered outreach in ways that um, typical scientific publications don't offer. A lot of publications in academia just get put in journals that other scientists read and then they never have an impact beyond that. Whereas the magazine is something that can be read by the public and understood by the public. We want to launch a publication online at first and eventually to launch a print publication too. And I think that's just going to be right now really, really timely. Because I think that's just a very powerful organizing tool uh, to have a place where we can publish our thinking and our work and what we've come to understand in these struggles. We're already forming relationships with authors, with contributors, with other publications, and it's a really exciting time um, for all of that. I think that a lot of people really want to write and contribute. Science for the People was always an organization and a publication, and we're replicating that model today. So the convention in Ann Arbor is about getting the organization side established. We have chapters in more than a dozen cities, and that's the foundation off of which we intend to launch the publication. convention is happening at all is really exciting to me. This was a huge undertaking. We made some decisions and we had people talking and we had presentations and we had people from all over the U.S. and Mexico. That's just incredible to me and that really, I think it's going to really galvanize a lot of people. I helped put together uh, a conference at UMass Amherst in 2014 on uh, Science for the People of the 1970s and today that looked at the history and legacy of SFTP and I really had not expected um, in 2014 that it was going to be reborn in this way. I've drawn a lot of inspiration from talking to original Science for the People members and my immediate reaction was uh, one of intense loss and so this resurgence has been incredibly exciting to me. So what's exciting about the convention and now is all the young people who are taking it and run with it. So that's very exciting. Plus there's all the older folks who are kind of, so it's this nice intergenerational, here's what we used to do, here's what would happen now, here's what, we want to remind you not to forget some things we thought were important, but also it's going to move on and take new directions that we may have, would never have thought of. The presentations about the, um, the topics that people have been engaged with were very inspiring. And yeah, it's, it's really exciting to, to see what people are involved in now and to get the sense that this is going to grow and um, that people will be involved in a number of important issues and campaigns and study areas. We have working groups in reproductive justice and women's rights, anti-nuclear 
uh, and, and militarism. Um, and we have a tech working group, we have the publications working group, the sociobiology, yeah, which has been a core issue for Science for the People from the very beginning, and labor, trying to get people to organize and, and talk about labor unions. I was happy to come here to see a few of the former generation of Science for the People and, uh, and uh, meet the new crop. I'm very pleased with the fact that the idea has been picked up and, uh, and uh, people have, are jumping in with lots of activity. I'm just excited to be around a group of people who care about um, saving the world. There's a, a, a strong trend within the current manifestation to be a critic to criticize the kind of science that's actually oppressing people, that's being used to oppress people, and I think that's very exciting. I also think it's exciting to hear people talk almost automatically about the political position that claims that science is apolitical. Clearly that's a political position. You should go beyond just doing your profession and considering what, uh, what impact your profession has onto society. I'm expecting science for the people to, you know, continue on for many more years after this. I, I was uh, saying to someone, uh, there is so little BS at this meeting. There is so little wasting of people's time. There is so little people self-glorifying themselves. It's just people who want to get something done in, in, in changing the world. It's beautiful, really. You know, we're, we're, we're struggling now in the left and the social movements in this country. We've been, we've been hit by a, a, a reactionary wind. And it's not just the uh, election of Donald Trump, it's, it's the uh, attempts to reverse all the gains of the 60s, the, uh, the gains of the civil rights movement, our achievements in, in, in protecting our environment and improving people's health. Trump gave us a, a kick in the pants. And this Science for the People meeting is one of the most together uh, new, progressive organizations I, I have seen.